Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And in this little mini-series I'm putting together, well, it's probably not going to be so many, it'll probably have quite a few parts. Uh, I'm trying to take off from Cape Canaveral and the XR2 Raven Star and get out to Mars. So in my previous videos, you know, I've made it to the ISS, I've made it to the Moon, I've made it back to Earth, and so I've done quite a few of those things. So I think uh, as far as like a logical progression goes, one of the next things that I'd like to try is to try to remember how to do interplanetary flight. So in the last video, we got our plan set up in Transex. So this in this video, we're ready to take off and head to orbit. So I'm going to go ahead and switch camera views here. Unpause the simulator. And our time to go is pretty much right now. We have a nice uh, 90 degree heading, pretty much 90 degrees. And I put enough locks into the XR2 to make sure that we could uh, breathe long enough to get to Mars. So. I, I just I feel like I'm forgetting something, but you know I'm just gonna go for it. So let me turn the HUD back on, switch time warp back to real time, and I want to have this up on this side, but I guess on this side I'll bring up. Uh, let me make sure I have an orbit set up how I want, and I guess what else? I think that's about it. So uh, let's just hit the gas and go for it. Um, we will try to do a scram ascent. I think I can. I think I can do that. So we're going for a heading of just over 90 degrees. Five, four, three, two, one, blast off. Forgot to turn off. Forgot to turn off external cooling. Forgot to turn on the APU. Forgot. 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 Luckily, the APU is powered up. Oh, I. No, you know what? Oh boy. Ugh, this is such a fail. <sighs> and to think, once upon a time I knew what I was doing. You would never know it from this video. Alright. So I'm doing a joystick ascent because I just feel like it's way, way smoother. And I hope I have my audio levels set okay. Uh, I was noticing myself that my spoken word was a bit too soft. I had intentionally turned down my mic volume because I thought I saw it peaking in the playback software or the recording software, so I turned it down a bit. But I oh, I turned it down so much that it was soft, and I had at least one person comment on that. And I and I listened to the videos, and I thought that was the case myself. Uh, but I hope I have the orbiter sounds turned down low enough that they're not blasting the speakers. All right, so I'm watching my relative inclination. It's pretty much uh, dialed in. I remember I used to have to fiddle with the white line on the ride to orbit, but uh, I'm not going to mess with that. So there's Mach 1, relative inclination coming down, but it may not be accurate. So we're going to go for, I think, on the previous trip I leveled off around just over 10 kilometers and then switched over to scram after Mach 2 so we'll plan to do the same thing here because that ride worked at least I didn't crash or overheat so we're gonna level off the Raven Star you know we'll still climb a little bit but just not as aggressively and then a little while after Mach 2 we'll turn on the scram engines. So let me see if I can uh, bank the vessel there a bit. All right. So I think it's. I don't remember what the scram doors are. The hovers control V. There's Mach two. Let's go ahead and open scram doors. So we're probably close to the point where we're getting up to Mach three. So we'll go full power on the scram engines and we'll kill our main gas. Switch back over to this view because it's a lot easier to read. And maybe now that we're climbing up to orbit, um, maybe I can fiddle with the white line a little bit. Keep it on our position. All right, so we'll go down to a finer setting here. So I think we need to go, yep, like that, and then 
So let me go. Overshot it. So if I remember if I try to keep that white line on my current position, it gives me a more accurate relative inclination, I believe, or maybe I was just deluding myself. Okay. All right. Uh, again, ride the ride to orbit takes a while. Can't really time warp through it. So if uh, this kind of thing isn't interesting, uh, just skip ahead or watch it two X or something like that until more interesting things happen. But as I've said before, you know, I just I like to record uh, as much of the flight as I can, just for my own my own interest of watching back. And I, and I found when I was new to Orbiter. Uh, the videos <clears throat> that I saw where there was more detail, it really, really helped me. Tremendously helped me. Versus the videos where, you know, people fly the same thing five times and they only keep the one that worked out perfectly and then they kind of edit it together. It's like, eh, I feel like, I feel like I'm missing too much there. So let me switch over here so I can watch my temperature. Boy, the, uh, I've got a new monitor since I was recording years ago. This is a 1440p, and these the uh, XR2 uh, is so much smaller. It's really hard to read the uh, the panel down below. The font's really small. And I can, you know, I mean, I can read it, but it's, it's a lot harder to read than it was on my 1080 monitor. Oh my gosh, my temperature. All right. Oh boy, we're getting really hot. I was focusing so much on the relative inclination that I took my eyes off the temperature for a moment. All right, I'm just trying to fly that razor's edge. Now, we did take off quite a bit early. Um, I probably should have waited one more day to take off. Because when we get into plan and we set up our, uh, when we get into orbit and we dump our escape plan and set up a maneuver, I like that to be close to the time that I originally set it up, which was for six zero. 600, zero, zero, so we're like two days early. Alright, temperature's good, so let's uh, level down a bit. Burn through this scram fuel. Relative inclination still coming down. It's getting ready to flip. So I'm banking a bit to the right now because I need to go the other direction for a bit. I think. Yeah, relative inclination's coming down if I bank to the right. Hmm, actually it's climbing. Let's switch directions here. Okay, I guess I do need to be banked this direction. Boy, it's getting really loose up here. I'm gonna have to switch to uh, RCS. Oops, descending, I don't wanna descend. Yeah, I just feel so, so incredibly out of practice with this simulator. Mark 
But I remember even back in, uh, you know, 2010, 2011, 2012, if I, I remember if I took even a couple of weeks away from Orbiter and when I would come back, I felt sloppy. I mean, not like I do now, but, oh no, temperature. Right, full power on the main, close the scram, get up into some cooler air. How's our orbit coming along? I haven't even looked at it once. Yeah, there's so much to pay attention to. Relative inclination, heat. Uh, how is your orbit coming along? All these kinds of things. And again, I, it's, it's incredibly unrealistic, in my opinion, to actually do this manually. I don't even think it's my opinion. I think that's just an objective truth. But it is fun. I mean, it wouldn't be m much of an experience if you just had a, a go button that did everything for you. And there is, there is a lot to do, you know. I mean, I'm not suggesting that the mission commander and pilot don't have anything to do on the space shuttle or anything like that but you know when it comes to this kind of like atmospheric flying and launch I just really doubt there's any person making these kinds of decisions because things just change too fast and you know you need some sensors that can read the environment you know like thousands and thousands of times per second So watching that relative inclination, even though the white line's not over my position anymore, but I think it's still a reasonable indication of what's going on. So we're a little away from orbital velocity. Let me pitch up a bit. Don't wanna don't wanna descend. Especially since we're no longer using scram. APA currently sixty-one. Relative inclination coming down, 6,000 on the speed. Zero, 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 relative inclination. 61 on the APA. Information, APU fuel 90%. Time to apoapsis. Increasing slightly. I think I just need to switch completely to Off. Mock 21. Okay, let's just see if we can ride this. Okay, let's pay attention to our relative inclination for a moment. Relative inclination coming back down. Pretty soon I'm just gonna have to ignore that entirely. Like real soon. Mock 22. Okay. okay. We're flying right on that. Apoapsis bubble right now, trying to anyway. But real soon, we're going to have to bring down the main. In fact, I think I'm going to start bringing down the main now, about half throttle. Watch that apoapsis. Let me switch views here so I can make sure I can see my numbers better. Bring down the throttle. Information. APU running. Okay, APA 70. Bring down the throttle a bit more. I'd like to have a nice circular orbit. That overshooting. Mock 24. Okay. APA 80. Time to the apoapsis. Apoapsis is increasing rapidly, so we're not quite flying the bubble anymore, but. Apoapsis 95. Mock 
information. APU running. Alright. Uh, all eyes on Apoapsis. Gonna kill the engines very soon. So I think we probably want to kill it around 190. About right there, because I believe it continues to go up. Actually, I don't need these on. I don't need the APU on. I'm just wasting APU. Yeah, I think the Apoapsis continues to go up a little bit while we're still in the atmosphere here, just barely. We're just barely in the atmosphere. All right, so with whatever time we have remaining, we'll try to, uh, you know, fly that razor's edge here with our relative inclination. Let's go ahead and bring that white line around to where we're at so we can get a more accurate view of things. I think it might have to flip, though. Yeah, I think we need to flip it. Yep. Yeah. All right. So we are currently going up, so let's roll the other direction. All right, and I think we'll just probably hold right about there. And we'll continue this until we're up to 85, 90 kilometers, which won't be very long from now, at which point we'll turn the APU back on, open the radiator, and then we'll plan orbital circularization. So we're at 80 kilometers, so just a bit longer. Go ahead and roll a bit more just to bring the relative inclination down as much as I can while I'm, you know, experiencing trace gases. Okay, altitude 83. All right, just a little bit longer here. All right, let's go ahead and turn the APU on. I don't know if the radiator has a hotkey. Go ahead and deploy the radiator. A little bit of time warp on that. And APU back off for now. All right, relative inclination. Still coming down ever so slightly. All right, so we're definitely done with the joystick. Let me set it aside, make sure I don't engage the main throttle because I have done that before. When I set it aside, I accidentally kick the throttle up. All right, now all flight controls are on the keyboard. All right, we'll switch over to orbit, HUD, and so for now, the next thing we need to do is just warp time forward. We'll still keep it just at 10x for now until our altitude gets a bit higher. And orbital circularization coming up in a thousand seconds. So let's bring up burn time. Switch over to Apoapsis and hit the circularize button. And let's go ahead and uh, get closer to the time to ignition. Come out of time warp. I guess we can try to adjust our our vessel a little bit. Get closer to uh, the proper orientation. So the autopilot has less work to do. Alright, once we're at, say, 30 seconds, we'll go autopilot. Actually, we'll go autopilot now because it's drifting down. And come out of time warp. And let's check how our orbit circularization came along. It did a pretty good job. 204 and 205. Okay, now... Um, so the next thing we need to do is to replace our escape plan with a maneuver. But I'm going to go ahead and pause the simulation for now. I think uh, the ride to orbit makes for a pretty good 
uh, video by itself. So when we come back, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll work with our transex planning a little bit because uh, remember when we set up the escape plan, we were on Earth, we were on the ground on Earth, and we couldn't know for sure when our exact eject would be. So that plan that we set up gets us, it gets us in the ballpark. It gets us really close, but it's not, it's not spot on. So we're going to set up a, a maneuver to replace the escape plan, and the maneuver will be more spot on. Okay, so that's going to be it for this video. If you like this part, go ahead and hit the like button down below, and I will see you in the next video.